Hello and welcome to Stephen University. This week we are discussing Gem Drill. Um, I mean, I nearly went into my old school an episode, blah blah blah, about this or that. But uh, no, instead I'm going to pass it over, as has become the norm. Chris, what was it about? So this episode is basically about drilling. Um, so yep. Stephen, it's basically Armageddon. They couldn't figure out yeah. the drill thing. They just call in Bruce Willis. <laughs> Because, you know, it's easier to teach uh, a, a drill guy how to be an astronaut than it is to teach an astronaut how to be a drill guy. Still, I mean, it's not the time, but fucking hell. Um, what a plot. Um, so it's Stephen, movie. I love Stephen, it, but it's ridiculous. Stephen wakes up uh, and he's like, OK, we've got to do this. The ground mm-hmm. is shaking. Him and Peridot are getting the comically small on the inside robot. They start drilling. They find out it's two hours. They have some chats about lava um, and mm-hmm. Peridot being created and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they they reach the, the cluster. Steven starts to go a bit odd and a bit crazy. Um, they try and drill down into the cluster and they're not really able to. Um, Steven gets a bit trippy. Um, it gets a bit like the end of Ant-Man. Um, and then oh, he does? He, he, <laughs> That's a good comparison. I hadn't even thought of that. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. Yeah, um, and he ends up kind of communicating in a trippy sort of way with the gem shards. Um, and he tries to say that he, he sh- should attempt to bubble them, but he's not able to, to do it. Um, and then they start bubbling them. Then he wakes up um, and he's still with Peridot. They're still scared. Uh, there's a really cool earlier on. There's a, a moment where they think um, it's not going to work. Um, and he tells her he loves her and stuff, and she's she's visibly touched. Um, so they're they're you know they're bonding, um, and then all the gems start to bubble themselves, um, and then Stephen manages to to find the power to do a giant bubble. Um, so they rise back up. Uh, the other gems return with uh, Lapis, and yeah, it's all, and we get a shot of the cluster bubbled underground. Yeah, um, succinct. I like it. Good. <laughs> Not that it's not normally. It's usually me that throws us off, but I, I, I like you. I like I like your description. Um Well there was a brief there was a brief to be fair, you tried, Dan. We did briefly nearly get into a, a conversation see, about the plot of Armageddon. Okay. Well <laughs> uh, okay, so I'll 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 cover myself here in my thought process. I went, I'm not gonna interrupt him this week. And then I thought, the Armageddon thing, it's so early, he's not in the flow yet. I can bring up Armageddon now safely as a little preamble, <laughs> and think- then he can just go through the plot of the episode without interruption. There's there's usually more sort of bits. There's not a lot of bits. It, it it's quite A to B. Um, in terms of how I think about it, I'll be I, I I'm torn. I'll be honest because mm-hmm. um I really liked it. There's some really nice stuff in it, mm. but we've had a lot of build up for what ends in essentially a group hug. Um, <laughs> and I mean essentially, yeah. I mean, yeah. what happens? Yeah. Um. I think the trippiness is so trippy that it it feels a bit like you, you're so mm. confused. You've never thought of it in that context, have you? No. <laughs> it's, right. So you brought two things to the table this week that I didn't think about: the Ant Man comparison and that it basically is solved with a big group hug. Which, yeah. by the way, in defence of that, it, it, that is very Stephen. To it's per- very per- it, Peridot's solution is to d- drill into it and destroy it. Stephen's solution is to try and talk to what is essentially he has been told is it basically an inanimate object. I know it's not. We know it's not. We know that it's part living beings because it's mm. gem shards. But for Peridot's clearly t- talks about and refers to the cluster as if it's an inanimate object. And they've done a lot of like sort of, you know, sort of uh, sentences from, coming from her that hint at that. Therefore, that goes into the back of your mind as the status quo is the norm. And when Steven starts trying to communicate to it, you realise how he's he's just better than all of them, isn't he? He's just he's he's clearly just the mm. best one. He's the nicest person. He's the most thoughtful. He's the most empathic. And he's in and 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 that's he's inherited that from Rose partly. And obviously, he's been brought up very well. Clearly, um, and 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 it, and this episode shows in two ways his evolution. One is how he's won Peridot over because ultimately. While Peridot has, in her time with the gems, uh, had an episode with each of them where she's won them over, or they've won over each other, I suppose you could say. They've come round to each other. It was Stephen was the first one to make a connection with her, and Stephen was the first one to make a connection with Lapis, too. So, you know, his empathy 
is uh, and the way that these 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 gems are sort of coming to their sort of side and the way he's able to talk to the and the cluster in this one it must be exactly the skill rose had in order to recruit the people she re- recruited for her rebellion and i think that it makes so much sense and I, I agree with you on the anticlimactic nature of it and we'll get to that in a minute yeah but i, I do think that's... from a storytelling perspective though it is the solution that makes the most sense for the characters yeah. and i and yeah. i and if i was given big action set piece or a character thing in this moment i would have chosen the character thing but i do understand that after all those episodes of build up that does seem anticlimactic i do have a counter to that but i'll let you explain your thought more well that's what i'm saying that's uh, that's why i'm told because it's i completely agree and never said i didn't with any of that that's that's mm-hmm. exactly why i'm told because it makes complete sense it fits everything um and it it really works on that level and it's it's very this show mm. and it's it kind of i'm reminded of like well that's the obvious solution so what do you do it's, it's a weird comparison but it reminds me of i remember you and i um discussing the fourth twilight movie and yes. we were talking about how because i've read the books um yeah and i was talking about how the final book essentially builds up to both sides being stood facing each other, and then one of them appears. Someone appears. Spoilers for Twilight, by the way. One of them appears and goes, "Guys, this is proof," and shows proof of something that needs proof, and then um, they go away again. That's yeah, roughly situation it. apologies def- to Twilight fans. The situation sort of diffuses, doesn't right? it? The, 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 the situation diffuses, and I was I was saying how I was fascinated by the idea of the film because how. How, you can't do that in a film. Um, it just doesn't work. And the film found a different way of doing it, where they had their cake and ate it. They they sh- mm-hmm. they showed a battle. Yeah. And I, I'm reminded of that with this because I think if I'd have read a synopsis of this episode beforehand, I'd have gone, "Oh, well, brilliant! Like, of course that is how it ends." And we're wrapping up two episodes in, and then we're on with the next story. Cool. Even if I'd have read it as a season finale, I'd have gone, "That makes sense. Awesome. Cracking." But just something about the execution as you watch it just feels a bit like, oh, and like I say, it might be because the trippiness is so trippy that it feels like they're trying to hide the, fa- you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It feels like they're doing that instead. Yeah. Um, and some of the visuals are beautiful and the cluster may come back and all of that stuff. Um, but I just found it, I think, yeah, it's it's just something about and maybe it's to do with the way we're watching these that you know it feels like such a big build-up actually if there had been three months in between then it, is it perfect i don't know i'd be very intrigued to see what other people thought of this because i'm not saying it's bad i'm not saying it wasn't exactly the right thing to do mm-hmm. but something about the way it was done just felt a bit like oh oh okay that's that's the, that's the end of that then i guess cool yeah well I th- that's the interesting point is our traditional storytelling brains are saying well that's the end of the sorts of cluster subplot but i will say that one thing that occurred to me when i watched this originally is well wait a second though it's not gone away no it's bubbled now the impression we got from peridot is that that's put there to destroy the Earth and has been left to its own devices because there's no real way to predict when it's going to take form and destroy the Earth, right? That was that was the that was the problem. Peridot couldn't predict when it would happen, mm. which is why they needed to move quickly. So my thought following this episode is, well, wait a second. If Stephen's gone down there, group hug, as you put it, wrapped a big old bubble around the whole thing, settled it all down. That's nice. Earth exists forward. At a certain point. The diamonds are going to go, well, wait a second, what's happening? Yeah, you know, at a certain point, Yellow Diamond's going to say, has the earth gone yet? <laughs> mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's got to be a thought at a certain point. And then they're going to have to come look, arguably. <laughs> Did, mm. did that thing, that super weapon we were cultivating inside that rock erupt yet? And so arguably quieting it is going to attract the attention of a group that don't currently know that Steven exists or the gems. Mm. So Yeah, because they'd be like, this is a big ass bubble. Who did this? 
Yeah, you're you're attracting more attention from Homeworld basically by doing this, and mm-hmm. I think that my ongoing thought was that while yes they have abated the uh the the immediate threat of the cluster, it's one still there, two attracting the attention of Homeworld in my opinion, um and then I thought and there's also the possibility that when Homeworld realise that they're going to come down and give it a poke to sort of get it back to where it was. It doesn't mean it's still not a threat if anything it's going to be a thing to like i said attract the the the, 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 the even bigger threat that is the this, then, the diamond authority as it's been as it's been discussed so i think it's uh it's an interesting one because while it isn't the climactic maybe battle or end that that plot feels like it needs after all that build up it's still this weird looming threat even now for different reasons though but then i think the best version and i don't want to go down the i i will say up front as we already discussed at length in the last few weeks it 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 is not the creator's fault it's cartoon network's fault so without getting into that element of this mm-hmm. the the ideal version of this episode then is the series finale which has yes. that and then cuts away to yellow diamond yes. looking at a screen going why why is Earth still there? Hmm. If it's not, if it's not gone soon, we'll have to investigate yeah. something ominous. But basically, like that. yeah, basically the Thanos, um, the, the Thanos thing from the end of uh, Ultron, where he's like, you know, yeah, do, I guess I'll have to do it myself. You know, he puts on the gauntlet, like yeah. uh, that, you know, uh, something in, to, to akin to that. Yeah, that, that's fair. Mm. Although the show has always been told sort of through Stephen's perspective, which has meant that we've. To, to 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 get a shot like that, you'd have to break the sort of show's own rules, unless it was another paradox tries to True. communicate with Yellow Diamond sort of situation, or Yellow Diamond tries to communicate with Paradox sort of thing. But she's pretty pissed at Paradox. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, but, well, maybe then you just have maybe then you just have them get to the top, and you have you have Paradox say it. You have Paradox. They're like, well, hey, we're safe. Da 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 da. Yeah. And then she yeah. sort of shudders and goes, "They're gonna come look at some point." And everything goes all silent and ominous. And you get the you get the star. <laughs> yeah. The star white from Paradox, devastated and fearful face. <laughs> I, I honestly think, and I know, I know, it, I know, we've talked about it a lot, and I know it's unfair to judge the quality on this, but I honestly mm-hmm. think. I'd feel slightly differently if this was placed at the end of last season. No, I, I, I see. What, I know. I see. And you know what? It's happened again at the minute. Because um, so today I got to work, watch the first new episodes of Steven Universe I've seen in six months. Really? It's, it's been a long six months. Um, a glorious, uh, a, a glorious return. Uh, six brand new episodes just dropped on my doorstep the morning we're recording this. And I will say that these six episodes are episodes five, six seven and onwards of season five which means that the last batch of episodes ended randomly with one two three and four of the new season it's ridiculous <laughs> and uh, like uh, like as we've done the cut we've done the discussion on yes this, but, but what they did this time nuts. which is what this time what they did and i'm i'm not trying to this isn't spoilers this is just the way it worked out in this in this example it actually worked out for the best because episodes one two three and four which were the last thing to air before the hiatus felt more like the end of a series than the start of one the beginning and and so i think what they did this time was cartoon network fiddled with the numbers but they still made it so they aired in a sensible way and what it it makes perfect sense actually because season four felt was was physically shorter than the other seasons by a couple episodes so it makes sense that we've you know the, the, the other stuff just sort of tagged to the end so um yeah the beginning of season five really should be the end of season four the same way that it does almost feel like the beginning of uh, of season three feels like it maybe should have been at the end of season uh, two. Yeah, that's uh, so. I, you, yeah, Cartoon Network screwed it up as usual. <laughs> do you have six episodes because you've been away, or because they literally dumped six episodes? Away? They've dumped six episodes on the app. Um, they won't air on television until December, Chris. Which is from those for those listening, it's the tenth, the tenth of November. Uh, you'll be listening to this in in the new year, but yeah, basically the the episodes that I'm watching now in November won't actually hit television screens until December. But they put them all on the. Are app, they gonna the continent? Are app. they gonna release more on the app then? Or well, this is the problem. We don't know. We might very well be. Mm. We might have well as well. It's very potential. It's potentially possible that we have just experienced the longest hiatus the show has ever been on since it started six months, and are about to go on another hiatus after one day, because we don't know when wow. there's more coming now. No idea. Well, because uh, in t- rather because last week we we spent a lot of time talking about like things that our audience already know the answer to. So, what are your notes or what were your other thoughts when watching it on the re this episode on the rewatch mm-hmm. and um like the first time? 
Uh, yeah, it's interesting because I, I, I feel I felt pretty much the same way about it both times, which it does echo your thoughts, which is it does feel like a very sort of a, a sudden and not the scale feels wrong, but it, it story wise and characterize it feels right. And when I think about the other ways this could have gone to give it bigger scale and more drama and more action, they don't feel right for the show. So I don't criticize it for the choice. So I feel as conflicted, I suppose, as you do. And maybe a little bit less so just on the thought of the potential of what this could mean and that it hasn't really been solved as such. It's it's it's, it's only been solved in as much as they keep bubbling up the monsters and putting them in the temple, you know, in that in that in that lava room. So, you know, it's it's that's not really solving the problem. That's putting it to the side until you've got a better solution. And what I uh, gained out of it the second time, which I didn't really appreciate the first time, because I guess I was just waiting for because, you know, it was very clear this was going to be the episode that we were going to get the, uh, you know, the sort of the, the, the culmination of this this um, this story, you know, this this cluster story. So I was waiting for huge revelations and crazy stuff. And the advert they put out for this little run of episodes, by the way, was bloody mental. I can't show it yet. Well, Apple got... did it. It, it just it's just the way they they cut to, from black to just very quick shots. And one of them was the hand on the side of the drill. And it just kept having Pearl. So you know, this you know, in the extended version of the uh, of the theme, there's a bit where Pearl basically goes, um, "If you could only know what we really are." They just kept playing that really hauntingly. What we really are, what we really are. And it's like, oh crap, they're going to reveal something <laughs> crazy about the gems in this episode. So there was all this weird expectation for this little run of episodes. Group hug. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the expectations kind of affected my viewing. Second viewing, I appreciate it much more. Um, and I do think as well on second viewing, I re- what I really gained out of the episode, which I didn't get the first time, was how adorable it is to see Steven and Peridot talking the way they're talking. And Peridot, for the first time, arguably, to sort of talk about being happy, living with the Crystal Gems. Like, she's happy. Yeah, it's the bit... That's, in, that's incredible. She, she was like, now I, have, now I have you guys. And, you know, the implication is now I have friends and stuff. And yes. that's... Uh, it's a really nice moment, and the "I love you" bit is very sweet, and it it really feels like she's cemented within them, um, mm-hmm. fascinated by how they use her beyond this, because the the use of her as being villain and then uh, sort of villain, sort of good guy, but they've got a mission to concentrate on. What happens now? There's no mission. There's no. She's not yeah. the villain. What does she? What does know, she choose it... to do now? Now, because because the yeah. reason she teamed up with the Crystal Gems was out of self preservation. So you're right. There's a very interesting situation now, which is that self preservation is no longer a factor. What does she do now? Well, and and Lav- Lapis is about too. What's yeah. what do both of them do? Yeah. Once once Lapis regains consciousness, then it's, what? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be it's gonna be weird after you got so any many barn episodes. Uh, my my predict and my hope. I don't necessarily have a prediction on those two. My predict and my hope for the next few episodes is we get some, we get some Lars, we get some Sadie, we get some Town, we get some not even like mm-hmm. Connie and not even Connie and and the dad. We get some we get some separate standalone episodes with the town folk would yep. be what I would both predict and what I would want. And I think it's going to feel weird after this sort of big epic. I mean, it's not every episode has been set on the flipping barn for, <laughs> for yeah. like a good four or five weeks. So like, let's have a uh-huh. full four or five episodes. So More let's, um, the, the barn arc is very lengthy. And, and, and yeah. I do think one or two people feel like the barn arc is where the show, show, show sort of um, lost a step. Um, I don't feel so personally, but I, I, I do understand the thought. It, it's when the show stepped away from, you know, some of the things that were so... Like, that were, the, I think the problem is it, when when, you, when a show becomes really good and it steps away from its formula before it's gotten tired, people reject it. It's really interesting. I've, I've noticed this as a trend. So I've always been a proponent of... I've always been a supporter of this idea that you should shift a show and its direction as much as possible. Keep people on their toes. You don't want to make it predictable. It never wants to be predictable. You don't want to be house, basically, where the writing and, is, and the acting is all still sharp as ever and the visuals are great and the, the characters think, are already engaging, but you're just doing the same thing every week. You know what I mean? At a just certain to, point... Just to interrupt is, you qu- quickly, I think you'll find the good doctor very much wants to be house. Carry on. That's true. That's very true. But I mean, you don't. No one wants to be house in the sense of sticking to the same premise 
for seven seasons, eight seasons. It's too much. So I've always been a supporter of shows, shifting the, the just not just completely pulling the rug out from under what the show is. You've obviously got to keep an essence of it. But things like this, like this little barn arc and stuff, they're, they're a way to keep a show like this fresh and interesting and exciting. And, and you sort of, what I find I found is that when you do it at just the right time, it's a masterstroke. When you do it slightly too late, it's, it's too much change. And I think whenever they do it too early, people sort of go, "Well, oh, the quality's dropped," and they don't. And I and I and I, I feel like, and I, I just feel like that's just one of those things. You there is a right time, but it's it's really hard to gauge it. And also, the great thing about this show is, in the situation they're in now, as you've predicted, they may very well just go back to that old status quo now and tell some more stories in that. Yeah. So it's not like it's gone away I, forever. They've not yeah, shifted uh, the status quo to a point where they couldn't go back to what they were doing. <laughs> And I think the other thing is the the great thing is it's it's going to be very hard for any show to ever have the worst series of episodes set in a barn because obviously The Walking Dead has that you know wrapped up for good like how how could anyone do do a barn worse you know yeah see you know the funny thing with The Walking Dead and the barn thing was I thought the payoff was really good. But it just took them too long that, to get there, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, that is because I I I shit partly on the barn for comedy. There, it's actually not. I it's, mean, I didn't it, stop watching it, at the barn, whereas it, I stopped watching later. It's the it's the the, the barn the is responsible for arguably the, one of the single greatest moments in the show. So yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the the, 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 the time on the farm what that that contains the barn is the problem was the problem in Walking Dead because it just dragged out a bit too long. But anyway, um. Yeah, so I think that it's really it's a really interesting situation the show finds itself in because I, I totally understand why people feel like it may have lost a step there because it's it's just become something different before the old thing got tired. So you just want more of the old thing. You were enjoying the old thing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like whenever it's like whenever they change Facebook and people go mental, they <laughs> lose their minds. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it's it's the same. YouTubers get complaining when they choose when they change the uh, the layout of YouTube. Um, so I like I, I understand I I, I don't I, and it's I, not even I I'm not even saying that opinion is wrong I'm simply observing where it may be coming from if that makes yeah, sense yeah I don't I I like you um I don't I get it I understand it but I I don't personally agree I think switching to um a lot of the show's been um episodic and a lot of the show has been about this grand overarching backstories and mm-hmm. mysteries whereas this was an arc about a specific event yeah. about something that was happening and, and something that was going to happen and it, immediately and it had it had a sense of urgency um yeah. a, a sense of like so a I sense of purpose that the show hadn't had previously mm. the show had always had this aimless sort of like just solve whatever the problem of the week was so to give them an actual ongoing thing to solve changed the dynamic um, mm. in an interesting way for a, for a few weeks. Do you know what I mean? For a, for a handful of episodes. And it served as the, the, the backdrop of one of my favourite characters' most interesting arcs. You know, the, the paradox yeah. shift in these episodes is remarkable writing on so many levels if if i if you could have seen one of these episodes bef- when you just met peridot the once and she was clearly just a villain you could you even could you even conceive of them actually successfully pulling off making you empathize with her and making her a likable character um yeah because the power rangers did it with tommy so. <laughs> right of course yeah power rangers again great <laughs> great <laughs> Um, did you? No, I did. No, I completely, I completely agree. Did you? Uh, do you have any other notes, Dan? Um, other? Let's see. There were some other stuff, uh, little things that I read. Uh, let's talk very briefly about the 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 shard things again, because it's it's kind of hinted here that the shards help create the bubbles and bubble themselves. Um, yeah. See, I. But they're still protected in this overall bubble by Steve, which seemed to be um, Steve's so doing. I, I thought that. That's what it looked yeah. like to me too, visually. Yeah. Yeah. So I and I think that covers them as well in that you can't they seem to have set up this pretty clear rule of if if one of the crystal gems bubbles something it they can't get out the bubble. So I'm assuming that means it's safe uh, apart from maybe yellow diamond. Um mm-hmm. them bubbling themselves I thought was a really interesting idea. I love the idea that even though they're seen as shards somewhere within them there is a, a a gems that are, are able to you know communicate and do this do this thing do the right thing. I wish we got more of an explanation about Stephen's trippy Ant Man powers, but I'm assuming that's coming, so it's it, that's fine. It, those powers seemed um, a little bit linked to the way he communicated with the other fusion Malachite through his dreams. Do you? I don't know if you do you remember that. 
Yeah, it did remind me of that. Well, and obviously last week, yeah, with the like the I seeing the island and stuff. So they they certainly have set it up. It didn't it didn't feel out of place. Um, it didn't yeah. feel. But you want more information? Like, th- yeah, it didn't feel thrown in what's, or like Stephen's got another power that will help us. I just want more information. Yeah, what's really interesting about this as a setup, and I well, and it's just the show in general, is that every gem seems to have different abilities, and Stephen's a new thing. So I feel a little bit like. The difference between this and a Harry Potter, and I, I don't mean to draw that conclu- comparison again, but it helps my point here. In Harry Potter, Harry doesn't know the world, but everyone else does. So whenever he has a question, they can answer it. But Stevens' new thing, no one really knows what he is and isn't capable of. <laughs> like, they weren't sure if he'd be able to fuse. They weren't sure if he was able to maintain some of Rose's other powers, like controlling plants and stuff. And over time, he's demonstrated various abilities. Some that Rose did have, but- some that I, I guess Rose didn't have, I don't know. It's hard to say. But it makes it harder for the show to elaborate uh, in detail because it's it's he's such a mystery to even the characters that like but the it, other go on. the other side of that coin is that it can feel that the writers are and I'm not saying they're definitely doing this all the time but it can feel like the writers are make uh, able Making it up to as make they go it up as yeah. it goes along yeah, 100%. yeah. whereas Har- harry potter feels like one of the most planned stuff my, one of my favorite things ever mm-hmm. is like in book six or seven when a necklace that was mentioned just fucking mentioned in book one or two came back like uh, just wonderful uh oh, it, yeah i think you'll i think you'll find it came it was originally brought up in, in book five no i'm talking about the one that was um it was used to poison someone. I'm not talking about like the main necklace thing. The one that was used to poison some B character. I can't remember the exact details. Oh, that one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You, and you, it we was are, like we are mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. When he first goes into that dodgy D- shop in like in the in, alley. Yeah. Think, in, yeah. In, 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 in or Nocturne Alley in the second book. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. It comes up in the second book and then it comes back in the sixth book. Yeah. 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 Stunning. Very clever. I forgot about that. You're right. That's something I didn't even think about. Steven Um, Universe and Harry Potter both stunning, as is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. There you go. Um, Another little hint, another little cool thing was that the control, you might, you want to recognise this, Chris. You might have done, I don't know which, what you owned as as you were growing up, but you may have noticed the control he used to control those little guns on the top of the ship um, was the uh, N64 controller. Like, almost identical to an N64 controller. Yeah, I thought that was a cool touch because to me, I th- must have been, I thought it was a PlayStation thing. So when you said that, I was like, "Fuck off!" Like just because I didn't, just because I wasn't a gamer, doesn't mean I don't recognize a PlayStation control. And then you're like N64, and I was like, "Oh, okay." I'm yeah, that, that it's very famously um, got that three prongs and the one thumbstick um, in the middle, I, which is it just, which loved, is a very iconic look. No, no other control since looked like that. I loved the well used the D pad joke. Yes, um, and I loved <laughs> what great. I loved about that was. I, it helped reinforce the idea that they built this machine out of whatever was lying around yes. in the house and the barn, yeah. which is is shat on slightly by, well, what material did they have that would withstand the heat of the lather of the Earth's core? But fine. Like... Now, didn't they cover that? Wasn't there, wasn't there a, a specific... Didn't they go on a mission to get... I feel like I remember a plot line where they went to get a metal to cover it. Or maybe is that why they ended up in kindergarten, maybe? Yeah, didn't they? Yeah, I think okay, they I think yeah. they nicked a drill bit and uh, some other stuff from kindergarten. I think they covered that, just about. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, I do think they covered okay. that. Um, I liked as well that the... the, the, the because in, in reality, lava um, is composed of melted peridotite, per, peridotite. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but that's a component that Homeworld obviously uses to, to make peridot gems therefore it was nice to see them sort of like making a nice touch comparison to actual earth gems as well um i thought that was really cool uh, let's see there were a few other things as well oh yeah and it's very interesting that the, the cluster must be extraordinarily hard um and in fact this is actually something interesting because we talked in the past about if you damage a gem's body which is a projection of light it'll just retreat into its gem reform eventually uh, you know it'll, it'll poof and then it'll come back and it reformed but it is theoretically possible to kill a gem by shattering the gem itself, which is why you have these gem shards. But the drill that was powerful enough to not only drill to the center of the earth, but did it in an extraordinary amount of time, two hours, which sounds like a very long time to be in a vehicle. I take it from someone who just spent three hours on a plane yesterday. Um, that's still extraordinarily quick for a journey to the center of the earth. Mm. Um, and yet it, that even that could not penetrate the diamond, the 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 the, 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 sorry, diamond, the, the crystal um, shards, you know, the, the the shards of these various mm. gems. 
Um, yeah, it's cool. So which which tells you if you were able to I, shatter a gem, you would need something extraordinary to do it with. They are clearly very tough. I I think it's cool as well the notion that um, if Stephen wasn't supposed to go necessarily because they'd have said it was too dangerous for him, but because it because he had to go that resulted in the situation being resolved, whereas if he hadn't have gone, that resolution might not have necessarily been there. Sorry, I, I was getting I was getting a bit broken up on my end there. Uh, it, it, would it be trouble for, to ask you to repeat your point, Chris, so I can respond? No, no, I was saying, I think it's pretty cool, the notion that Stephen couldn't... Stephen had to go because the yeah. other three gems weren't about. Yes. But if they were about, they potentially would have said, no, you have to stay here, it's too dangerous. But ah, they yes. wouldn't have been able to resolve the situation. Only Stephen could. Yes, 100%. Things. That's really cool. And also, I like that when they show up at the end, they come back through a warp pad because presumably what they had to do was walk to another warp pad n- nearby to Mask Island and then walk back mm-hmm. rather than travel back ma- manually. But you're right. I think if they'd have gone along, and I love that joke as well. How are you going to fit them all in here, Peridot? Ah, we were going to shrink. Like the idea they just all shape shift into there. That's fine. They'll figure yeah. it out. Um, uh, she didn't really think about the practicalities, evidently. She just made it for herself. It's a bit like that joke from a Lego movie where it's like Batman makes a a vehicle with one seat and they're like why don't you make more seats it's like four of them all clinging onto the back of the plane and he's just like well, I've only got one butt duh um, it felt like Peridot sort of did that she made it to fit herself and maybe Steven <laughs> um, yeah. but you're right if the gems had gone down without him they would not have been able to solve that problem um, and I do yeah. feel as well a little bit that his powers are very much connected to his self-worth and I do think Garnet being like we believe in you and we love you before they like lost their ability to communicate with each other is a factor in him having the strength to do it. Um, yeah, because I'm I'm glad we didn't go down too much of a Stephen lacks confident rabbit hole in this episode, which mm-hmm. they so could have. The whole episode could have been Stephen finding the strength to do it, um, and mm-hmm. I'm glad that we got a bit more no, than that. No, I, I agree with you. I think it's a much clean, much more interesting way to do it. Slightly different, a slightly different version of that story, basically. That's 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 that's, that's, that's the the, the 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 character built uh, sort of build up is still there you still know that it's something that he would have maybe struggled to do had he not had that confidence boost but skip that completely and get to the more interesting element of of him choosing to do that instead of destroy it which is a much more interesting story to tell mm. definitely mm. cool there we go yeah oh yeah the, oh other thing as well sorry quick call back i just thought was funny uh peridot still refers to ears as head holes which uh, she last did in uh, Too Far. I made a note of that because I thought that was really funny. Um, also, they've kept a bit of consistency. The barn still has a hole in the wall from her little rampage in Message Received. Um, it's now covered by a blue tarp. I don't know if you noticed the barn in the background, but it still has the big hole no, in it. No, but it, it doesn't surprise me that they... <laughs> They have paid that much level of, of attention. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nor me, nor me. But I think that's I do I do love that they think about that sort of stuff. So yeah, there you go. So that was uh, Gem Drill. Um, we'll be back, I guess, in a in a in a few days' time uh, to discuss same old world. So um, that's the mm-hmm. uh, assuming you have nothing else to add, Chris. No, no, no. All talked out. Good. Good, good. Well, hopefully not. We just we got to do like another hour and a half podcast after yeah, this. We really fucking have. We're going to be here all night, aren't we? Anyway, um, <laughs> we just set ourselves up for a fall, haven't we? Um, anywho, that is everything for this week. I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham, and we'll speak to you next time as we discuss same old world. Dan here, and I'm joined, of course, by Chris. That's... I didn't know what you were going to do. <laughs> no, I didn't know Chris, what I was going to do either. Chris. I like the idea that you're going to become the Matt Damon now. You like Matt Damon. Chris? <laughs> I thought this was really good, Chris. <laughs> That's the... Anyway, this sort of nonsense, <laughs> this sort of witty banter. If you're enjoying this, guess what? Now you can give us Wanta. money. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you can. We have a Patreon page, um, a Patreon page that I am going to pledge right now. Bold, Chris. You ready for this? Mm. I'm going to pledge, and if I have to make it just myself, that's fine. But next year, for 2018, there will be one piece of original content on the Patreon page per month. Boom. 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 Per month. Oh, I thought thought you were just meaning for the whole year, and I was thinking that was ambitious. (laughs) Per month. 
It might only be a five minute thing. It might, you know, I'm not saying anything yeah, will be substantial. Better at it, yeah. But I, 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 look, enough people are doing it that we really, I feel we owe them that. So from 2018 off, there's going to be a January piece of content, February onwards, you know, through all the months. Um, um, so yeah, so join us now. Support now. Get on the, get on the train before it blows up. You want to be an early adopter of these things, don't you? That's the, that's, well, that's what they say. Yeah, you would have. You want to be able to tell your friends, I was a patron of Nothing But Static early. And your friends will go, what's Nothing But Static? Um, <laughs> I was on the ground floor of that success story. Um, but, you know, feel free. It's it's one of those things where we don't mind if you don't, uh, but it's nice if you do. Because it helps us cover the server bills. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive help. Um, we, you know, if you... If there is an amount you would have paid to have this, or if there is, you know, an amount you wouldn't notice going missing, um, it it would be amazing, um, mm-hmm. and we we would be so grateful. Um, yeah. and there there will be stuff going on it, as Dan said. You know, it's not hundred percent clear what it is yet, but you will be getting some exclusives, um, and you will genuinely be helping us. It it makes a huge yeah. difference. At the moment we operate so. at a loss. It'd be nice to operate evenly. We don't want to make a, a money off the podcast, but we'd like to not be losing money doing it. <laughs> yeah. So that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's everything. So yeah, um, um, I don't know if I'm putting this at the end or the beginning of a podcast, but um, either I hope you enjoyed the podcast you just heard or enjoy the podcast. I think put it at the beginning because otherwise, you know, would they pledge after listening to that shit? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry and thank you.